you know, <clears throat> 2019 and 2020 has been one of those most challenging years for Christians. And for those of us that love to fellowship, you don't have to be a Christian alone to love fellowship, but we all like getting together. And we all want, want to be invited, or we want to invite people to our homes. But with, with the restrictions and all that has been put in place in the last year because of COVID, it makes it so difficult. But yet the idea of inviting people an invitation should never cease. I think with the changing rules and the restrictions, I see open doors for us as believers that we can be able to now extend invitation to those that are not yet in the fellowship of God. I see opportunities everywhere I go, every person I talk to. It's like you go to the shop and you begin to talk and all of a sudden people want to talk to you. You go to your mechanic shop, all of a sudden, they want to talk to you. So there is this great door that is open lately as a result of an opportunity that you and I can invite others. So this morning, our scripture that we will read, we will read a story of what Jesus really has called us to do. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 14, and I'll read from verse 15 to 21. Even though I said they're 16. But I, for the sake of giving it more context, I uh, wanted you to re I will read from verse 15. So when one of those at the table with him heard, he, heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who, those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go see a seed. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yokes of oxen. And I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I, can, I can't come. The servants came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and the alley of the town and bring in the poor and the cripple, the blind and the lame. So the servant said, what you have ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servants, go out to the roads and the country lane and compel them to come so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of the banquet. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. We are invited first by God to partake in this great banquet. And this invitation that God has extended to us, it is absolutely free. And this invitation, like the prophet Isaiah began to talk about this invitation, he says, come now, let us reason together. The door your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. So the idea of invitation is something that is so powerful that has been in the heart of God. God is constantly encouraging people to come to him. And God is compelling us that now that we have come to the, dining, to the banquet table, God is then saying to us, now that you are here is not just for you. You alone. It is for you to go out and invite others. The prophet Isaiah continued. He said, 
Come, all you who are thirsty. I tell you, the greatest thing you can do to anyone that is thirsty is invite them and offer them a cup of cold water. When you offer them a cup of cold water, I, I myself have been on multiple trips, on multiple outreaches where you thirst, you, 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 you're basically in firming for some test, somebody to give you some icy water to quench your thirst. And when you get that, it is like, wow. All of a sudden, you value a precious bottle of water. A number of years, I was on, uh, on one of our church conferences in Michigan, in, uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And while we were out on the street, just, you know, in the blistering heat of summer, I saw a group of uh, some, I think they are Jehovah Witnesses. They stood around the street corner. And they had this cooler. And they were just handing bottles of water to people. And so you grab the water, you drink the water, and all of a sudden, you have this inscription. They had especially marked bottles with stickers with their own name and all of the... You know how the Jehovah Witnesses use the word of Jehovah as though it is really some Christocentric, but we know it is not. And so this imagery came to me when I read and I hear from the prophet Isaiah. He says, come all you who are thirsty, uh, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come and drink, come and be refreshed, come and have milk. Oh, because the God that has created us has created this great feast. And so God created this feast and he invited us. The Jesus, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus invited the weary and the, those that are heavy and are burdened. Friends, there is many, and I say it, many out there. And as we all know the story of Quebec, Quebec is one of the largest mission fields in the Western Hemisphere. And the desperation, the yearning in people to be invited for something, it's out there. And COVID have just even exacerbated the need for a relationship. And so, come to me, Jesus said, to all you who are weary, and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke because it is light and easy. Have you seen anyone that is lately burdened? Have you seen anyone that is really weary in their soul? God opens your eye and opened my eye. We have seen it. We sometimes just ignore it. We sometimes just allow the, the mundane activities of the day to distract us. Our little target, our little goal, our, our, our time-driven culture. But sometimes it is, a, what, it is what to remember that there is a call for us to do the work of invitation. And when we do the work of invitation, we do not invite because we want to convert we invite them we present to them just like we see in the passage in in luke where jesus said those that were invited imagine this man had prepared a banquet feast for his friends that he had sent invitation and probably they had given him their yes Probably they knew the date. They knew the time when the banquet was going to happen. But yet, some of them asked, went ahead and scheduled their wedding day on the same day that they have offered, they have uh, agreed to attend a banquet. Some of them had decided to go buy land. And only on that fateful day did they say, oh no, I have a, just bought a land and I need to go and have a look at it. Or, or the guy that says, I have just bought some ox, oxen and I need to go try farming. When you have accepted the invitation already? And what did Jesus say? The servant, he said to the servant, servant, go out to the highway and the byway. Bring me the cripple, the lame, the brokenhearted. 
It may not be literally physically crippled, but they might be, there might be physical deformity of, uh, uh, of people that are crippled, but as well as spiritually deformed, crippled people. And so Jesus tells the story, and the essence of telling a story is so that the imagery in the story gives us that visual nature that, yes, this is what Jesus is meaning. Friends, there are so many people uh, that have been invited but have they really responded or are they responding like those that have we read in the passage we are not only to invite those that look like us those that act like us those that belong in the same social club with us we have been invited to go out to the highways and the byways and when we go to the highways and the byways to invite people i guarantee you those that we invite knows that you are stooping in a different class or in a different culture to be able to invite them and like as a result of that it draws their attention there's got to be something about this invitation. On Friday when I went to, I, you heard a little bit of my testimony of a U-Haul. So when I went to pick the U-Haul, and I got talking to, his name is Travis. He's from, oh, I can't remember the name of the town, but it's past, as if you're going to uh, Sherbrooke. And he asked me, so what do you do? And I said, I am a pastor. And he said, what is a pastor? <laughs> and I said, I preach the gospel. Oh, he said, you're a Catholic priest. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not a Catholic priest. So we had this interesting engagement, a conversation. And I said, why don't you come and see what a church looked like? He said, no, those people. When I was growing up, my mother told me not to go close to them because they will make you have as many babies as they want. <laughs> and I go, you see the impact of a cultural Christianity that, that and I don't want to be cynical, but when a, cult, when a Christianity becomes cultural and not relational, it loses the edge of invitation. And I had this beautiful conversation. And then at the end of the day, the man asked me, so where are you from? I said, obviously you know I'm not from here. <laughs> so we had this come back and forth, back and forth conversation. And he said, so how do you get money to do all this traveling that you have just talked about? Bing, an opportunity to tell him about a God that provides, a God that does miracles. And I literally, I shared a testimony to him that in the next couple of weeks, I'll be traveling to South Africa. And he goes, how? I said, I'm not swimming because even if I swim, it will take me a long time. And I said, I'm flying. And here is, I told him the miracle of knowing that it, my ticket only cost me 130, 25, less than $150. So... In our conversation, the invitation is not to go to those that feel that are in the same social class. Then if we only relate to people that are in our social circles, then we are missing the point. And I'm not saying don't invite those in your social circles. Because you invite them as well as go to the highways and the byways and invite uh, others. You see, the, owner, the, 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 the man that was creating this banquet had this grandiose idea. I will be able to dine, wine, and dine with my peers. And lo and behold, on the day of the event, those that he taught have always been his social class buddies. They probably go golfing together, if there was anything like that. They probably go biking together. <laughs> they probably go doing everything that we all love to do together. But on that fateful day when it's time to really have an encounter with the living God, they just abandon him. And what did Jesus say? He says, go. Look for anyone that is willing. We are in a time today, in a generation, that we have to look 
carefully who are those that are willing to come to this banquet table who are those that God is already at work in their lives let me say this I'm honestly God is already at work in the lives of many those that did this bank the servants went to get God was already stirring in their life they just didn't know it so but this man's obedience of sending his servants go to the highway and the byway invite them to come and they came in in droves and then Jesus left the punchline by saying the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first wow I tell you Jesus's way of teaching has a way of really turning the turning everything upside down so we see invitations beginning with God even from Genesis then the human invitation that we can see um, is Isaiah prophesied the invitation that God is calling, come. Then we see Andrew, when Andrew met Jesus for the first time, oh boy, he knew he met the real deal. Andrew could not wait but run to his brother and, inv and invited Peter and said, Peter, I have found the Messiah. When Philip found the Messiah, he could not help himself but run to Nathaniel and said, Nathaniel, I have found that prophet which we have read or have heard about. I have heard about, you know, before the arrival of Jesus, history have it that the, the story of the gospel of the prophecy of Isaiah of the coming Messiah has been, there has been this great expectation. And so when Philip saw him, he said, yes, this is the real deal. And we know in the story of the Samaritan woman, after she encountered Jesus telling her her whole life story, she became one of the first recognized female evangelists that we know. She went to her neighborhood and said, Come, I have found the Messiah. And why would people believe her? They believed her. The community believed her. Despite the fact that the man, she has had five husbands. And the current one she's living with is not even her husband. And so they knew that if this woman has been radically transformed in an instant. And they could see the glow of what God has already done in her life. Then they believed it. And we see Levi as well, who is a tax collector, invited his friends and co-workers to come and hang out with Jesus. Friends, when we find Jesus, it is not for us to just sit on this banquet table for ourselves alone. But it is for us to go to the highway and the byway and invite others. Cornelius, of all people. When you think about all of these names, you go, these are ordinary people. These are no superheroes. These are men just like us, just like you, just like me. And the Bible gives us the account that if we read the story, and if we can be able to look at God changing this life, ordinary people. Can you imagine what God can do through you? And remember, at this time, they only have physical Jesus. But Jesus says, I am ascending to my Father and I will send you the comfort of the Holy Spirit who will be present with you always. Friends, can you imagine? It's like we, these guys have zeal, right? We shall be more zealous and passionate as though we are on steroid because we have Jesus. We we have the Holy Spirit dwelling amongst us, in us, and so that should compel us. Because when you find something good, you don't want to hide it. Friends, we have seen it. It works. By God and Jesus saving souls. By the disciples winning souls to Christ. Most of us today were saved because of someone inviting you. Somewhere, someone invited you and shared the gospel with you. Or maybe you grew up in a home that, is, that take, regularly takes you to Sunday school. But even in those homes, somebody in your home invited you to meet this Jesus that is real and personal. You and I have the great task. 
I always like to ask a question. When last did you invite someone to come to this banquet? Not the barbecue you have at your house. Not the barbecue, uh, not the great feast you had for graduation. That as well. I'm not opposed to that. I love having people. I love party. People, my family, I can barbecue all summer. So finally, COVID is over. <laughs> no, COVID is not yet over. Finally, the restrictions, I can have a small number of people. I'll just tell them, bring your picnic chair. We don't have a big picnic chair. Bring your lounge chair. We'll sit outside and cook out and eat and have a great time. But when last have you really invited someone to this great banquet table? Because on this banquet table, friends, there is so much to share. There is so much. And Revelation 7-9 gives us an imagery, a visual of what this banquet table looked like. He says, and I look and behold, there is this great feast that no one can count. People from every tribe, every tongue, every language. Oh, and on this feast, can you imagine the kind of buffet that is there? It's not the buffet that you go to a restaurant, the, the 10, 1099 restaurant or 999 flat fee. This is a free buffet and it is a banquet where you sit with the master and you dwell in the presence of the master. When last did you invite somebody to your church fellowship or your church Bible study group? Sometimes it is easier to invite people, curious seekers, to a fellowship group than for you to invite them to the table. Because when you invite them to a fellowship group, they have a tendency to explore more conversation. And you allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in them. Amen. Friends, let us put this to work. Invite people to church. Invite people to study. Invite people to obey. Because when we do that, we will be like the good stewards who, when the master was about to embark on a, on a journey, he called three of his servants and entrusted to each and every one of them a number of talents. To one, five, three, and one. My prayer is that we will be like the stewards with the five talents who went and traded and multiplied. That the gifts and talents that God has given you, that the gifts and talents that God has endowed in you will not sit in you and waste, but that God will take that and you in your own obedience will take those gifts and talents and use it as a tool, as a power for invitation to invite the lost and the least, to invite even the ch those that are in the church to be more highly, to be more fired because sometimes we get lukewarm, but when we invite each other as the Bible says as iron sharpen at iron we will sharpen each other and our own relationship with God will even go continue to grow deeper so friends I invite you that in the coming week let us put what we have heard to practice let us pray and so God the invitation to the banquet is real Jesus demonstrated that to us through, the par through this, this parable of the banquet. God help us that we will act and go out to the highways and the byways and invite people to this banquet. We don't want to do it out of religious duties, but we want to do it out of a reverence relationship with you. And help us, O oh God, to be able to be in tune to see who needs the invitation so that when the Holy Spirit nudge us, we will respond quickly. Be glorified because we are able, not by our power, but by your enabling spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.